Okay, so there's a lot of questions about um, the two lectures we did on glycolysis and the TCA cycle, so I thought this would be a good time to um, do a video lecture on it. All right, so basically what I want you guys to understand is we're going to start with glucose up here, okay? And by the end of glycolysis, what we're going to have is, let me zoom out a little bit, is we're going to have six molecules of CO2 because we're oxidizing all six carbons of glucose. We're also going to end up with 10 molecules of NADH. So these are the reduced forms of the electron carrier NAD. And we're going to have two molecules of FADH2. Okay, and then we're going to have four molecules of ATP. So this is what we are going to end up with after glycolysis and a TCA cycle. So let's go back and look at glucose real quick. And so basically the first steps that I want you guys to know are the 10 steps of glycolysis. I'm not going to draw them all here, but for now remember that there are 10 steps and that I do want you to know the enzyme names. I want you to know the names of the reactions, they, which reactions they catalyze. I also want you to know what those enzymes do. So I want you to know that a dehydrogenase oxidizes something and that a kinase phosphorylates something, okay? But in glycolysis, remember to start glycolysis, glycolysis, we actually have to put in some energy. So two ATPs are used, all right, in glycolysis. But what we get out of glycolysis are four molecules of ATP and two molecules of NADH, all right? So this is kind of our product. So we get a total of four ATP out, but because we put two in, our net is really two molecules of ATP. All right, and so if you look at glycolysis and you just think of the reaction we were just drawn here, you can draw the very simplified reaction of glucose plus two NAD, all right? Because we have to draw our reactants, our starting reactants, plus two ADP plus 2PI, and the 2PI just means inorganic phosphate, okay? And our products for glycolysis, oh, we forgot to draw it down here, we basically generate two molecules of pyruvate. This is a three carbon sugar, all right? And so we didn't lose any carbons. We just changed glucose, but we didn't change the carbons themselves. We didn't oxidize anything yet, okay? So we have two pyruvates and 2NADH, because we now reduced NADH, right? and we generated 2 ATP. So this is the net reaction formula for glycolysis, right? which I want you to know. So what we've done is we've taken glucose, remember we've made two pyruvates, we've also made 2NADH. Um, when I say we didn't oxidize anything, that's not necessarily true because when we make NADH, we have to oxidize something. But we didn't lose any of the carbons from glucose. Remember, we started with six carbons here. Let's draw six C's. And here in pyruvate, all right, we have three C's, three carbons. All right, we have two of them. Okay, so that's glycolysis. Next, before we get into the TCA cycle, remember what happens is pyruvate moves into the mitochondria. All right, and it actually gets converted to two molecules of acetyl-CoA, and this is the starting product for the TCA cycle. This reaction is done by the pyruvate, see if I can draw this quickly, dehydrogenase all right, complex. All right, so this is a complex of enzymes that do this reaction, but I just want you to know the name of the complex. Because this is a dehydrogenase, remember dehydrogenase oxidizes their substrates, so we need to reduce something. Well, what we've actually reduced is NAD. So in this reaction, we actually generate NADH, and because we do this with two pyruvates, we're actually making two NADHs. And remember, we've oxidized something, and typically when you oxidize something, you see release of CO2. And that's actually what we've done. We've released two molecules of CO2 because pyruvate's a three carbon molecule and acetyl-CoA is a two carbon molecule. All right, so let's draw two carbons here. So we've lost a carbon and that's where the CO2 comes from. 
and by oxidizing that carbon we can reduce the NAD into NADH. Okay, so if you want to look at it, the reaction formula for the TCA cycle is quite simple. It's basically 2 pyruvate all right, plus 2 NAD plus, all right, um, plus coenzyme A. Okay, this is just the precursor um, that we're going to join the carbon molecules to. It's called coenzyme A. And this makes acetyl CoA. Okay, two of them, right? Because we have two molecules of pyruvate. And it makes uh, 2CO2 plus 2NADH. Okay, and sorry, you're going to need two molecules of coenzyme A here to make two acetyl CoAs. Okay, so this is simply the TCA cycle reaction. Um, I don't really care that you, you know this exactly, but this shows you what this one reaction is doing. Okay, so now that we have our acetyl-CoA, we can go into the TCA cycle. Now remember, the TCA cycle, all right, is a cycle that takes one molecule of acetyl-CoA and does a bunch of reactions to it to ultimately generate NADH, FADH2, CO2, and ATP. But let's think about this. If we have two acetyl-CoA's, that means we're going to do two turns of the cycle because this is for every glucose molecule. Let's go up here. Every glucose molecule, we've generated two acetyl-CoA's, which means that for every glucose molecule, we're going to go through two turns of the TCA cycle. So the TCA cycle, if you do it two times, you're going to generate six molecules of NADH, right? two molecules of FADH2, and four molecules of CO2. So this is the point at which all the carbons are completely oxidized. This is a two carbon molecule and we're actually going to oxidize it completely. So we have four CO2s because we're going to do this twice. And then two molecules of ATP. So this is what we get out of the TCA cycle for every molecule of glucose, meaning we're doing this twice because we have two molecules of acetyl-CoA. If you, the TCA cycle only goes through once, you're going to be doing. You're going to be generating basically three NADH, one FADH2, two CO2, and one ATP. Okay, so keep that in straight in your head. So if you look at the overall reaction formula for the TCA cycle, let's do one turn of the cycle. Okay, one turn of the TCA cycle. Let me draw that one turn. All right, you basically start with acetyl CoA plus three NAD plus the oxidized form, plus FAD. Now FAD is just like NAD, it's a, basically an electron carrier, so don't, don't get confused by the two. They're the same, they're basically the same thing. Plus ADP, plus inorganic phosphate, okay? One turn, all right, actually will generate two CO2, okay, plus three NADH, plus one FADH2, plus ATP. Okay, so that's our reaction formula for one turn of the TCA cycle. Now, for every molecule of glucose, remember we make basically two, react two turns of the TCA cycle, so these are going to be doubled if I ask you per molecule of glucose. Okay, so let's actually zoom out real quick and let's figure out, let's work backwards. Remember I told you we're going to take one molecule of glucose and turn it into these products. Well, let's, let's calculate them. Let's find our CO2s. For every molecule of glucose, we generated four CO2s in the TCA cycle, and we generated two CO2s in the TCA prep cycle. Remember the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. So there's our six right there. Okay. Our NADHs, we made 10. Let's count them. For every glucose molecule, we actually generated six molecules of NADH in the TCA cycle. All right. We generated two molecules of NADH in the prep reaction, so that's eight total. And remember in glycolysis, we made two molecules of NADH, so that's 10 molecules of NADH. FADH2 is pretty simple. The only place we see FADH2 is in the TCA cycle, and because we do it twice for every molecule of glucose, we generate two molecules of FADH2, and that's where this two comes from. And then the four ATP is the two molecules of ATP from the TCA cycle, remember, for every glucose molecule. So we're doing this twice, this turn, we're doing this cycle twice. 
And then we also got our net two molecules of ATP from glucose. Remember, we put in two, but we got four out, so we get a net of two. So two and two, and that equals our four ATP. Okay, so that is basically our what happens when we fully oxidize glucose and glycolysis in the TCA cycle. All right, and so that brings us to our overall reaction formula that we talked about earlier, which is basically the overall reaction formula is glucose plus 10 NAD plus 10 NAD plus okay, plus 2 FAD plus 4 ADP plus 4 PI. Okay, and that gets converted to 6 CO2 plus 10 NADH plus 2 FADH2 plus 4 ATP. So there you go. That's essentially the complete oxidation of glucose and the glycolysis in the TCA cycle. So let's quickly talk about two more important things. Remember, let's move over here. Glycolysis is taking place in the cytoplasm. All right. If there is oxygen, oops, sorry about the M there. If there is oxygen, it's going to go down cellular respiration. If there's no oxygen, remember anaerobic conditions, we're going to do fermentation. And I want you to know the products of the fermentation. I want you to know the purpose of fermentation. All right. Then we have our then pyruvate gets moved into the mitochondrial matrix, and that's where the rest of these happen. So the the TCA prep reaction and the TCA cycle themselves take place in the mitochondrial matrix. All right, so know your locations where you are on these different reactions. And then lastly, let's talk about the electron transport chain. Remember, the purpose of the TCA cycle is to generate all of this potential energy, to put all of the energy of glucose and put it into the electron carriers in ADH and FADH2. So let's see how that happens in the electron transport chain. Now remember, the ETC, I'm just going to call this for short, electron transport chain, occurs on the mitochondrial inner membrane. All right? So these are a bunch of enzymes that are actually embedded on the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And what they do is they take NADH and FADH2 and they combine it with oxygen. They combine the, the electrons from the electron carriers with oxygen to oxidize these molecules to produce ATP. And we'll go over that later. But essentially how it works is that one, one molecule of NADH can make three molecules of ATP, and one molecule of FADH2 all right, can make two molecules of ATP. So if that's the case, let's just do our simple math. In the electron transport chain, we take our 10 molecules of NADH from our TCA cycle and glycolysis, and that gives us 30 ATP. All right? We take our two molecules of FADH2, and that gives us four ATP. So, and we already have four ATP, right, from the glycolysis and TCA cycle anyways. So if you add all of these up, you get 38 total molecules of ATP from the complete metabolism of glucose during cellular respiration. Remember, this does require oxygen, okay, because what you're doing is you're taking <clears throat> Excuse me. You're taking oxygen, and you're taking NADH or FADH2, and you're combining these into H2O. Okay, you're regenerating NAD+, and from this, and I'll show you in a different way when we get to this section, from this ATP is made. All right, and this is what we refer to as oxidative phosphorylation. The synthesis of ATP, let me move over a little bit, the synthesis of ATP by oxidation of NADH. Okay, so hopefully that helped you out a little bit. You can see here, let me zoom out so you can see some of the overall reactions here. Okay, but I want you to basically know this. I want you to know the products of these reactions, all right, where they're taking place, how much total ATP we get out. If you understand these concepts, you're gonna, you'll be fine for my exam. Again, as always, just email me if you have any questions on this. Um, and I'll have another video on describing the difference between substrate level phosphorylation and oxidative phosphorylation that will be coming later. Okay, so if you're confused about those terms, I'll just have a quick short video about it.